Uh, the Federal Reserve's emergency lending facility is predicated upon the notion that Treasury and agency securities have no credit risk. That facility will be expending, extending loans of up to a year using these securities as collateral. But one problem, potential problem, is that unless Congress raises the debt ceiling in the next few months, U.S. Treasury and agency securities will face the prospect of default. Now, while I certainly won't vote to default on the debt, I think some of my colleagues may not feel the same way. In light of the events in the financial system over the past week, how damaging would a debt default be to our banking sector, particularly to regional banks? It, it would be completely devastating. And I don't think that Congress should, for a second, contemplate the possibility of not raising the debt ceiling to pay our bills. This is the cornerstone of um, what, what makes our uh, financial markets the soundest and best in the world, and people uh, trust that the government stands ready to pay its bills. It and would be a And calamity. obviously, if we're using Treasury securities to back up the loans that we're making, if those Treasury securities default, then we have a, a, a cascading effect. It, it's beyond contemplation. Is it possible, uh, or I should say, isn't it possible that if Congress fails to raise the debt ceiling well before any default, that we could run the risk of seeing more runs on regional banks? Yes, we, well, we have seen that concern about con whether Congress would meet this responsibility has provoked um, concern in financial markets. That was evident, for example, in 2011, mm -hmm. when there was a downgrading of the U.S. credit rating because of doubts as to whether or not Congress would act appropriately. Well, the fact is that a debt ceiling fight has always been dangerous. It's always. dangerous for our financial system. Agreed. It's dangerous for our businesses. Yes. It's dangerous for working families. And it's dangerous to put at risk the U.S. dollar as the reserve of choice in the world, which others are seeking to replace us in, uh, which has enormous benefits to us. Wouldn't you say that having I, our dollar as the reserve choice in the world? Yes, I completely agree. It's no. because, in part, because our financial system is so deep and treasuries are regarded as so safe and liquid. Now, in 2018, Congress passed a bill which was signed into law by President Trump that relaxed regulation for institutions like Silicon Valley Bank. That law, which I opposed, exempted those banks from enhanced prudential standards, stress tests, raising the threshold at which a bank would be considered systemically important. So even as the law kept Silicon Valley Bank off the list of systemically important institutions, regulators, on a bipartisan basis, rightly cited systemic risk to justify their actions over the weekend. So, Secretary Yellen, isn't it true that the situation at Silicon Valley Bank posed systemic risks? Well, look, I think it's, it's important for um, regulators, the banking supervisors, to examine what happened at this bank. But clearly, the bank had a very high proportion of uninsured deposits, which um, made it vulnerable to runs, and it experienced but if the, a devastating if, run. But, Madam Secretary, the regulators say that the reason they're intervening because there was systemic risk, then it must have been systemic risk, right? Well, in the sense that the, the chances of contagion that other banks might be regarded as unsound and suffer runs um, seemed seemed extremely high, and the consequences would be very serious. Seems to me that uh, institutions, while we still have a lot to learn, like Silicon Valley Bank, have the potential to be systemically important, and our laws and regulations should treat them as such. Let me close on the following. In the President's budget proposal, there is yet a glaring absence of a issue critical to families in my state and in other states in the country. The budget continues to allow C corporations to fully deduct state and local taxes as under current law. Isn't that the, the, the case? I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure. I, th I think so, but... Yeah. Well, uh, for the purposes of our discussion, let me just assure you that the budget allows C corporations to fully deduct state and local taxes under current law. Okay. But it does not 
propose the same tax benefit for middle class families. Um, is, is that fair to say? The issue of state and local taxes is one we think that Congress should address. Well, I'll close by saying if C corporations can deduct state and local taxes, middle class families should be able to deduct state and local taxes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Senator Scott. Thank you, Mr.